Hey guys, Sam here. Welcome back to the channel. This is the road to 300 pounds, so I'm due another eating challenge. So I'm here in Prato, the Bradizio place. That's the traditional Brazilian grill where they just bring around unlimited meat and you help yourself to the sides from the buffet. So I've got plate one on the go here. I'll show you that. We've got the potato, the rice, the chicken, pasta bake, the fried bananas, a load of lamb and a load of beef rib right on there. So. That's plate one. I won't be able to quantify any of this because, well, for one, I thought it'd be a bit extreme to be bringing <laughs> weighing scales to the restaurant and figuring it all out. And for two, it's very hard to get numbers on it when you do real food anyway, because each cut of meat will vary in how lean or fatty it is, and that's gonna affect all the data on it. So, you know, that's another reason why I'm all about meal plans rather than like macros or whatever, but more so just nutrient dense food. So it's going to be a lot of re red meat today. It's going to be a lot of the carbs as well, but mostly the starch carbs is most useful for bodybuilding. But there's no particular goal. I'm just going to talk to you while I eat as much as I can, give a rough estimate of how much I've had or just show it. And that's going to help me get towards my goal here, which I slid back a little bit on that weekend away at the Arnold Classic. So, we start plate one now, and I'll see how many, how many plates I make, but they, it'll be hard to quantify that as well, because they just bring the meat over and cut it off, and you just help yourself with the, with the, prong, the, uh, the forks here. But this is my go-to. This, or an all-you-can-eat sushi, or the JRC Global Buffet that I've been going to lately are my go-tos for a big meal and catch up while bulking. But actually this place, I've even gone to pretty regularly on contest prep because it's very easy to control the carbohydrates by just staying away from the buffet table. And that's my main method for cutting down. So I have been known to have some pretty, pretty big meals in here on contest prep as well. And the last time I competed, I was 240 pounds stage weight. And next time round, if I do it next year, I've got no idea what it'll be. But with my progress so far and making it to nearly 300, it'd be highly unlikely that I'd make it back under the classic limits. But I'm gonna talk to you through this lovely meal as my video for today, talk a little bit about contests coming up because the NPC calendar and their shows in the UK, that actually all starts tomorrow by the looks of it. So that could be a video for tomorrow, showing you what that's all about. And speak a little bit in this video about the benefits of, of showcasing that in tomorrow's video. But if competing in particular interests you, I'd recommend that you subscribe and stay tuned for all of that because I'll be giving coverage of these amateur shows and what it all looks like and explaining the process. Along with covering everything else, bodybuilding, so nutrition, my workouts, all other info, interviews like last weekend. May I make some headway now? I feel like I should preemptively Use the hoodie before the meat sweats kick in properly, which they're almost certain to do. A little pro tip if you come to a place like this, is you want to get in about this sort of time. This is being recorded at about 4 p. well, half 4. What they do is they change over to the dinner menu and everything fresh at 4. But if you get here sort of between 4 and 7, you get all the fresh stuff, not much waiting around because it's before people have come out for the evening that are doing a proper evening meal. So that's, that's your window of opportunity if you want to eat as much as possible and it be as fresh as possible in the Prato kind of place. So here in London, we've got Prato in Victoria, Bayswater, Shaftesbury Avenue. There was one up in Anfield, but that looks to have closed. I think there's one somewhere else, I don't remember at the moment. And then other grills that are like this, they've got Fogo de Show down on Chinatown Way. And one or two other places that I've yet to check out, but Preto's my go-to, and they've just added to my plate a load of uh, 
beef neck. So that's like a fattier cut that you got there. And the leanest thing they brought me so far was the, was the lamb. That's going to be awesome. So I'm going to get my money's worth today. The sirloin's just been added. So as you can see, I'm pretty pretty piled up now. <laughs> this is going to really keep me going. But I really think red meat is important for bodybuilding because it's the richest in micronutrients of all the different kind of protein sources. Well, that and organ meats and eggs. But eggs we don't eat so many of because there's, um, there's the fat that's in them. Now, fat's important, but it's one that you, you, you can overdo a little bit. Obviously, 100 grams or even 200 grams wouldn't be unusual, but you start having loads of eggs, it's more the fat than protein. So you sort of have an amount of those and then with organ meats, they're just not that tasty, <laughs> to be honest. So they're not that practical to have absolutely loads of. And you can actually overdo it in like vitamin A if you have absolutely loads of the organ meats. So really like the go-to for eating loads of it for protein, if you want the most nutritious food, is gonna be your beef and lamb. So loading up on that in a big way today. And it's a staple of my diet year round, including contest time. People think of uh, red meat as so much fattier than fish or poultry, which really depends on the cut, you know. If you want the leaner ones, you're looking at the silver side, the top side. That would be far, far leaner than salmon or even sea bass, sea bream, if you're talking about fish. It's not that much more fat than your, your chicken breasts, but it's so much more nutritious. And besides, you do need an amount of fat in your diet anyway. I'd say even on the low end for cutting down, for a woman it might be 40 grams a day, for a man it might be 60 grams a day. It's kind of a minimum to be healthy, so... I think there's always a place for it, the red meat in the diet. I think a lot of the avoidance of the red meat and general, real food in general, it's kind of just laziness and doing what's easier when it comes to the diet side with the whole bodybuilding thing. Because you think of people that will just not really change anything except to throw two or three protein shakes a day on top of what they just choose to eat anyway, and that's their approach to nutrition with bodybuilding that's actually quite common like among among like more kind of casual gym goers actually I've observed that quite a lot or even on the real food like I think with chicken people sort of accept that it's going to be more flavorless like flavorless on its own until you add a seasoning so it's kind of like you don't have to cook it as carefully whereas dealing with the red meat you're either going to roast it or fry it and have to keep an eye on it and people rather just kind of throw a shake together just throw some powder and some water and uh, it's just not as good I think um, I've generally noticed the more I've had real food and I'm, I'm exclusively real food I don't use any supplements you know, if I do, it's just you know, it's just to try something out. But my base diet is always real food, and I've noticed with the more I've learned about bodybuilding and talked to bodybuilders and looked at competitions and stuff, that it seems that the higher and higher you look up the levels of achievement of bodybuilding, the less and less powdered food basically is being used because when you when you strip away like these protein shakes basically when you strip away the the branding and the marketing and the funky pictures and cool labels and sponsored athletes and all the rest of it and you just bring it back to what it is it is just powdered food and when you pull that back to if you ask the question are oh, you want to build the best physique as possible with the most strength and health and are you going to use like 
high quality real food or powdered food formula, <laughs> the answer would be obvious, but I feel like the marketing is so strong that people just don't see it like that. Or we'll even think of a lot of these supplements as like better than a steak, which it absolutely is not. And that's why I did make a brief remark in my Arnold Classic videos about being very, wanting to be very careful about any sponsorships and stuff or people that approach me and what I may or may not accept as a, a good idea in who to work with is I don't want to just jump onto the first one or two like supplement sponsors that come as an opportunity because it doesn't really sit well with my message of my channel which I don't want to pepper dilute. Steak. Oh yeah, pepper steak, do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, very, that's fine for now. Here we go, it's constantly, constantly on the go here. I think I don't want to dilute my message. I don't want to put, put something in my video content that's not what I would say to someone that I'm helping that I really want the best results for. And so I would be trying to steer away from powdered food, which is actually rubbish. It, that's how it all started. What whey is, is basically a waste product of the cheese manufacturing process, which used to be just discarded, like, you know, dust on the floor, just, just rubbish thrown away until they realised that it had a decent amino acid profile and could be marketed and sold as a, a source of protein to youngsters that want to get big and, uh, and whatever. So that's how the whole game kind of started, but it was, it was just kind of rubbish, literally, that, that they could resell. So to me, I'm just, you know, it doesn't excite me that much to be pushing cheese dust and powdered food in general in place of the real thing. So I've got a bit of a history behind me of working with charities and organisations that promote real food as a means to improving health and putting various diseases into remission in my work with public health collaboration and I think the work that I've done there and the point that I've got to it would be selling that short to be taking a 10% little kick back on every tub of cheese dust powder that I sell so be very careful about that sort of thing. But with this whole laziness idea and what's quick and convenient, that happens in all like, aspects of bodybuilding, as someone will say, like, with the training, I've gone on and on and on about what I consider the kind of general collective of most effective exercises. And it's, the general theme is it's the harder ones. You know, they used to call it the big five, the squat, deadlift, bench press, barbell row, um, and military press or pull up, depending on who you, who you read. But there, that was the five or six that were considered the main ones, the most effective ones. I would say there's that, and then maybe add to that like two bar rows, uh, weighted pull-ups, weighted dips, hack squats and leg press. But, you know, that kind of 10 exercises or so should be the core of the program. But what I've noticed, a bit like the people will just kind of lean towards as much protein shakes as possible rather than fixing a diet, is you leave someone to their own devices in a gym and those kind of, you know, six to 10 exercises fall to the wayside and they add, well, the, the trainee will want to add more and more machines and the spec cables and faffing around stuff basically and these are the people that are the same size like year to year to year and it's basically they'll have I have like loads of theoretical reasons for it or what feels good or whatever but what it boils down to is just the easier lazier option like powdered food and cables, not an awful lot of muscle being built that way. I mean, even on the enhancement side, it'll be um, the approach of that you know, kind of mindset of like, um, you know, can I just take one or two, one or two tablets and you know, what's, just tell me what the best one is. And it's like a little bit more to it than that, you know. Or um, 
even sleep and recovery. I'm really addressing that because that's kind of one of the weak links for me. So I've done a sleep study and I look to address what may be sleep apnea that's developed from my size. But I feel like a lot of people, instead of like fixing their fixing their schedule and having less late nights out, avoiding alcohol, caffeine, avoiding staring at a screen or having um, things that they're reading or studying or working on at a screen like in the bed or bedroom and lights on too late and stuff like that instead of fixing all that it'll be kind of oh you know what um what supplement or tablet do i take and fix it but the answer with bodybuilding it's not in any of the easy options or the quick fixes it's really like the the harder stuff and the more demanding stuff that delivers the results. So that's heavy training, hard exercises, consistently, real food, nutritious food, in excess, consistently, clean living, and good sleep hygiene, no alcohol, no recreational drugs, using hormones, potentially. keeping it clean apart from that and it's really that you know, that's the really important stuff over longer stretches of time but even a stretch of time of six months with, with all the all of the important stuff worked on properly can deliver tremendous results in, in many ways I'll say that my results myself have exceeded my expectations, but I do actually do all of the things that I evangelize about. So that's, that's part of why I show everything that I'm doing and daily videos on the channel is that as well as me kind of pushing an idea or talking about a concept, you know, to see me live it as well. But it's not a bad life, you know. This meal right here is very pleasant. You could say it's paradoxical in a way that on the one hand I'm saying, oh, you know, it's no pain, no gain, and all the results are in the more unpleasant stuff and harder work and stuff. But on the other hand, I'm trying to promote it and like sell an idea as like an enjoyable lifestyle. But those things don't don't entirely go in opposition to each other. There's a certain amount of satisfaction that can only be achieved from working hard. But anything, any advice or ideas that make it seem like too easy or you can skip entire areas of it and it'll be just the same results or, or you know, selling it like it's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows is not how it really is. Like. The reality is that these physiques that most of us, you know, regard as the best or want to, excuse me, want to emulate, they really are quite literally forged in blood, sweat and tears. I mean that literally, like if you go as hard work as you can and particularly if you're competitive with it, that's how it is. But there's the amount of satisfaction that comes with that that you can achieve in any other way. So. It is still really enjoyable and something that I love, otherwise otherwise I wouldn't do it. So you never hear me complaining about it, you'll just hear me sort of say, well, this is how it is. This is why I like it. This is what I do. This is how I'd recommend that you treat your own journey or break it down in terms of, well, this is the type of result that you want then these are the kind of methods and level of commitment that's going to be required because that does vary obviously there are kind of levels to this in you know how extreme the goal is and you got to kind of that, that, that's why I want to spread the information actually that's part of why I want to spread the information is I want people whatever their goal is to sort of go into it with their eyes open and be kind of like okay well they sort of know before you, you start the path of it, whatever your goal is, that if that's the level of the goal, 
this is the, the level of ingredients that are going to go into it, the level of commitment and the price to be paid for it basically and then you can make an informed decision quite early on about whether you consider it worth the price that you pay for it before you embark on it and potentially you know waste your time or waste money damage your health unnecessarily or you know suffer the opportunity costs of doing that rather than something else because for me I'd rather know like at the outset so I sort of feel like anything that gives false promises is just wasting people's time is just not right so sometimes when I talk about my ideas it might not be exactly what people want to hear but the reason behind it is because I want to I want to help people by laying this all out in a way that someone could go into it at whatever level they want to with their eyes open and make their own choices but you know, stuff like the easy peasy training philosophies or the you know, just add a few protein shakes or, oh yeah, you can get this phenomenal level and be all natty or whatever and stuff like that, that's all bollocks. Mmm, what's this one? Top side, Oh, top side, yes please. Thank you very much, that'll be, that'll be fine, thank you. So, you heard that, that's top side. That'll be one of the much, much leaner cuts of beef, so, you know, as your lean protein, you could swap that in for chicken breast and only have like 10% less of it and it'll be the same you know amount of energy if you're determined to do this by calories which uh, I don't regard as a necessity as, as you may know from watching my previous videos I hope that leaving these little bits in where I'm being served my food gives you a little bit of a view of what it's like going for a radizio meal because it's definitely the best kind of restaurant for a bodybuilder I would say it's my go-to and if you've never been to one before, this would sort of give you an idea of just how easy and convenient it is. You, you just get your own sides and then settle in and it's just brought to you regularly. There's no end to it, except when you're full. So they give you a little card and you just leave that on the table on green if they want, you want them to keep coming or if you need to stop or just pause it, you just turn it over, over to the red for a while. But mine's been on green the entire time I've sat here. And as you can see, I'm getting all sorts of cuts of, of lovely beef and lamb just arriving every five to ten minutes. And it's meant that my plate hasn't been empty at all yet. You can see the, uh, the top side has joined in, but most of my sides are nearly finished now. So it's going well, but I'm going to leave a little space for dessert because it is my bulking program. Body composition is okay. And so a few treats on top are okay. And my go-to will be the cheesecake. The ice, if you're trying to eat as much as possible and you struggle to eat enough, and you need treats and cheats to fill up, it's usually like something soft that will go down easy on top of what's made you full already. So the go-tos would be stuff like ice cream. That's what a lot of big guys would do. I was just thinking about getting this video out later today and I can't really think what would be a good thumbnail because normally if it's like an action packed like gym one it'll either be where I'm like flexing or doing one of the better exercises of the workout but here I'm just kind of sat at the table so I don't know I'm going to try maybe if I, I put, my, put the forearms like if I put the head back looking small and just put the forearms like this and then the text could go up here or something like that maybe that'll do I don't know but I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow will be an opportunity for a more interactive video because I expect there will be people there to talk to. There's already a couple of people that I've met through doing the YouTube channel that are going to be there. So uh, shout out to Connor. Nice to meet you at the weekend. I know you're competing tomorrow in the Classic Physique. So I expect to be there. I expect to see you looking on point. That's... Uh, Connor Page, who started a YouTube channel called Motivational Avenue, which I started talking to him on here from him doing that. He looks in really good shape, so that's who I'll be supporting with the classic physique stuff tomorrow. And I think it'll be useful. 
if there's opportunities for interviews with people, that'd be a bonus, but just showing it as a day trip, I think would be useful just to give like an inside look at a, a contest in the NPC, because this is, this is the route that you'd go if you want that IFPB Pro card, you'd have to be in the show tomorrow as your regional qualifier, but really it'll be like a national level show because all the pro qualifier stuff that you have to have done this one first for, they're all international. So what it means really is that tomorrow, anyone that's interested in getting stuck into pro qualifiers for the season, international shows for the season for this year, that's based in this country, will want to do tomorrow and get it ticked off. So what I expect to see is kind of the best of what the national level is at the moment tomorrow. That's really how it works. So this contest tomorrow, I did it last year. And the year before, I did the pro qualifier event that follows on two weeks after the Ben Weeder Classic. But I didn't do a qualifier for it because I didn't compete in the open classes. I just competed in like the novice classes. Just, just to have a rematch with someone that, that was placed higher than me the week before. So I went back the next week and placed higher than him for fun. That was two years ago, but last year I did this one that's on tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I didn't win it, so I didn't see the sense in going for a pro qualifier last year. But I really enjoyed the experience all the same. I'd improved a lot from the year before. And I did get a win elsewhere for the season last year. So yeah, in the mix, like for classic ph physique, but maybe I won't be able to make it down into the weight limit and I just go and watch people that still can along with seeing what the super heavyweights look like because that's who I'd have to compete with if I was doing the, the other way, you know. Yes, please. Mm. Yeah, that's fine, thank you. Yeah, that's fine. But once you've done a show like tomorrow, you can go and compete anywhere in the world in a pro qualifier event. So anyone wants as many shots at it as possible for the year that's based in the UK it will probably be there tomorrow. So I expect it to be very busy there tomorrow. It's down at the Braywick Centre down in Maidenhead. So it's very quick to get to from London if you're you know, part of my North London bodybuilding brotherhood. You would simply get the Elizabeth line all the way to Maidenhead. One one trip and then it's about 15 minutes walk from the station at Maidenhead down to the leisure center and that's it so it's it's a day trip even when I'd done it before and because I'd done doing classic physique I had to have the weigh in the night before I still just traveled back I traveled to it and back the night before and then again the next morning for the contest and it was easier than messing about with an Airbnb or hotel and added expense. So if you are in London, which I guess, yeah, I know quite a bit of my audience is in London. If you ever want to go and watch something like that, it's quick enough and then you get a sense of what the logistics would be like when you're ready to compete down there. But I'll be, I'll be showing you all of this stuff tomorrow. So that's, that's tomorrow's idea for a video. But I will still be going to the gym. I haven't given up on going to the gym. I'm just not full force on the on the full weights because my, my body's saying, saying he's off a little bit. So I'll make it to my 300 pounds and then it'll be like a kind of health phase, cruisy kind of regroup and show you in my journey what that entails. So stay tuned for all of that. That'll be the next next couple of months after I hit my 300 pound target. But any opportunities to go to events, I think would make useful information, especially where people are prepared to give their time for a quick interview, like I did last weekend. I look forward to more of that. I particularly enjoy that kind of thing. But if you, if you have like requests for what kind of stuff to cover in the content, as I am covering everything, if you do have any particular ideas or requests, just drop them in the comments. And I reply to all of those, so we can, we can talk about what's feasible and I keep the variety going and cover everything as we go. I'm the only person in the restaurant now, so I'm just getting absolutely bombarded with meat. I hope I haven't like sent everyone scuttling off by making it awkward by filming all of this, but 
I did. I did request to have the table in the corner to not get in anyone's way. So this is the corner of the restaurant and the camera's not pointing at anyone else in here. So I hope it's not that. I, mean, I don't mean to be rude. I mean to just kind of show things in my content as they are, as they're happening, you know. But it is empty, so I'm getting all the best of the food sent straight my way and not much rest in between. So this will definitely assist on my journey to 300 pounds. I have to come back here next week, I think. But I'm looking forward to getting done with this because I've just seen on, on my phone one of my favorite bands has just released a new album, which I hadn't been expecting this soon. A band called Critical Defiance from Chile is like, kind of pretty technical, thrashy kind of stuff. They've done an album back in 2022. This is really good stuff. I'm really into the metal. I was at the Judas Priest show last night and it was, it was really good as expected. The set list wasn't quite as good as last time, but it, you know, it is Priest, like their whole, their whole discography is awesome. And they're the originators as far as I'm concerned. But this I'm looking forward to listening to. We've got Critical Defiance and there's so much good thrash like i think thrash is probably the thing that i listen to that's most popular with people in general so like the, the thrash thing if you didn't know is like slayer and metallica and anthrax and megadeth is kind of the more accessible end of it but it's really good now there's loads of good new bands worldwide in this stuff now so there's loads of really great bands from norway doing thrash like death hammer inculter and especially Necromantian. And then some of these South American bands like Critical Defiance. And there's, uh, I think they're from Greece, a band called Rapture, uh, one of the best. So the thrash stuff is proper on. And then some of the older bands have come back that are doing really good thrash stuff like Sadus have just done a new album that's good. And then a really amazing comeback album was the Hellwitch, Al Hellwitch album of last year. I wasn't expecting that to be so good, but Thrash is in a healthy kind of situation at the moment. If you do listen to metal and you you know your Metallica and Slayers and stuff like that, but wanted a few ideas of what's good now in the thrashier kind of end of the metal spectrum. But for me, when training, it's like death metal or traditional metal mostly quite a lot of thrash but the death metal when it gets heavy really like brutal brutal stuff another gig I went to recently is Cryptopsy Cryptopsy from Canada for most of you this probably means nothing so so I won't go on about it too much longer I do know some of my audience likes metal though I do know a lot of the gym guys listen to like Metallica so I'm just kind of trying pave the way to some more, slightly more extreme or nuanced tastes. This whole Rodizio thing, the Brazilian style, maybe that's the secret of the Brazilian bodybuilders, you know, like Rafael and Marcelo and Ramon, all these, all these guys. I'd, I like to think that they, they're like absolute animals at the Rodizio restaurant. But well, they say Ramon like built his physique with rice and eggs, don't they? They say he was really poor and was discovered because he was doing calisthenics a lot in the street and was discovered as looking amazing and got ushered into a men's physique contest, which he won, and then made friends with a load of fitness influencers and lived in a house with them and got connected in, into the right people and the right coaches. and brought up from there, that's what they say about his story, so I think that's why they love him so much is, well obviously he's amazing physique and he seems very friendly, but I think a lot of them like relate to him as a guy that was, you know, not privileged at all and like built his awesome physique with the, with the cheaper foods, but still the real foods, you see, and you know, just training in whatever environment you could find, like the street with calisthenics, I think. I think that's made him a bit of a national hero, very well loved, relatable. You know, you've got to 
you've got to keep it relatable and I, <laughs> I hope that I do that a little bit by kind of not being not being so accomplished you know, that's, that's my way of being relatable as I'm not even uh, I'm not even an IFBB pro I've just been hanging around the whole gym thing for 20 years and having various misadventures I'm getting close to all all the stuff that they brought over now the sides are finished which is half of this big plate and then just a few cuts left here but I'm gonna leave room for dessert and I do have two more meals planned for the day so already cooked and ready to go is another chicken and rice for the day and then the evening meal is gonna be ten eggs and a steak and that's all in stock as well so to space things out I'll still have those meals and probably just make do with this and the dessert here but this is a video that I've been intending to do for ages because I do regard this as the best kind of restaurant for filling up on bodybuilding food, like the real stuff. And it's my favourite, it's my go-to, it's where I celebrate with, uh, with friends when anything good happens, it's my general choice. So I had been meaning to do a video in here for ages, since the start of the channel really, so I'm glad to have got this one, this one in the bag and I can always point to it when I'm recommending where you'd go restaurant wise especially in off season you could just do whatever you want in here in off season and maybe just count it as two meals or if you struggle to gain just do it regularly on top of all the other things that make it easier to gain like having loads of whole legs and having the rice or rice products that go down easier Maybe adding nut butters to some foods, like if you if you digest them well, which I don't, unfortunately. One well, of the fattier cuts of meat, well, the fitting your fitting your meals into your schedule more easily. All these things that help you eat more if you're struggling to gain. But this whole struggling to gain thing, it shouldn't be an issue for most people. I think it's something that I harp on about more just because I'm taller so you've got like basically this bigger skeleton to fill out with muscle but to have the same proportions as me uh, at any height less than six foot would be a lot less of a job on and would require much less eating over less years so in a lot of cases this whole packing in more food and the challenges around it aren't as relevant so while I bring it up a lot, don't think that it's going to be that hard or have to be that hard for you if you haven't got like the kind of the kind of skeleton underneath that that uh, has more of a tendency to look gangly and not filled out because it's it's kind of you know more height and longer limbs that come with it. If you're a more reasonable kind of height, like. 5'10", 5'11", even. Yeah. There might be three stone less muscle that you'd have to build to have the same kind of proportions as, uh, as a competitive bodybuilder. And that could mean, you know, only about 60% of the food, say, in your peak off season. Oh yeah, one little tip that I've just thought of to include in the video like this is Another thing that could be prohibitive to eating like this for a lot of people would be like the cost of the red meat versus versus the, the poultry and the, the fish or even protein shakes, which I'm not such a huge fan of. With the cost, if you are based in London, which I know a lot of you are, just go to the Smithfield Market where the restaurant owners go and get it all wholesale price. When you go somewhere like that or the equivalent in your town i do know there's a couple of other wholesale kind of meat markets in the uk i think i think there's one in liverpool but the cost of it is going to be cheaper than what you pay for the cheap stuff in the supermarket so you're getting like cuts of beef like brisket and chuck for maybe five pounds or five pounds fifty per kilo and then if you've got a chest freezer and you can cut it up into daily or every, every two day kind of portions and back them up as cheaper than chicken would be in the supermarket.
that you've got that tastier, more nutrient dense, high quality food. And this is a bit dearer for things like sirloin, but I've seen sirloin down there at like nine pounds per kilo. And a video that will go nicely in the nutrition series alongside this will be to do a tour down there. So I've been meaning to get down there with the video camera to make a video showing the place and how it works and what kind of bargains you can pick up on your, your meats. The only logistical problem is the timing of it. So it's open, it's open from about 3am 3 3 a.m. till about 7am, so you've got to get there super early in the morning. But I'd have to get there a bit earlier just to negotiate getting the camera out on how I was going to do it. So I haven't been yet and it's a bit of a trek for me compared to where I, where I used to live in London. I'm much further north now. But it's near, it's near Farringdon. I think Farringdon would be the nearest tube station. And you can get down there super early in the morning. Or uh, we'll drive down there and see the loading up if you're going to buy in bulk and the easiest drive. So that plate with the rest of the meat is now done and I've got my dessert which is the cheesecake as usual. So maybe, maybe this could be the thumbnail. You know how they always do like a clown face on the thumbnail these days with it like... Yeah, that could be it or not. But this is always my go-to, the cheesecake. So I'll dig into that and then maybe maybe pop somewhere for a coffee afterwards if I've got any more rambling to do about these contests and bodybuilding methods and what's easy, what's hard, where to get things cheap, where, where to eat out at the restaurant. This is so good. I could eat another one, but I shan't. I'm not going to uh, break the bank just to eating more and more desserts here. I'll just wait till next time, but... That's my favourite cheesecake. This is a really soft one which I prefer a lot of the getting loads of food in is to do with the consistency and when I've had a solid meal with all that meat and having the ice cream that's really soft or the cheesecake that's a particularly soft one just goes down perfectly. Uh, I'll make sure to come here more regularly again. This is a very regular thing for me. Yeah. Done. As I hoped, I've been able to find a spot for coffee down in Victoria Station, as that was the preto down at Victoria. I thought I'd finish on this before heading home. This is the direction I came the other day for that meet and greet at Orpington, the Sam Selleck thing. Just got the, the train out to, I think St Mary Cray was the station nearest to Muscleworks Orpington, and I had to come via Victoria, but I can see myself going back that way to do a gym tour of that video and it was actually helpful. One of the comments that come in today on my last video recommending a few other places for gym tours, but they were on my shortlist. I've got uh, Norton's gym at uh, it's Welland Garden City, isn't it? I think that's just north of London. And then I've got Monster Gym at Chesham. That'll involve getting out to... No, I think that actually, I think there's a train from North London I can get, otherwise that would be a, a trip via Liverpool Street. And there was one more. I've, I do find a lot of these comments really helpful, exactly the kind of info and ideas that I'm looking for, you see. And as I said in the reply, it's not just the amount of followers or subscribers, they call them on YouTube, but it's the, it's the quality, not the quantity. So, where people come in with comments like, yeah, it's new generation of speech commented this one and suggested muscle limits, Jim, as well. I think, uh, is that the one in St. Albans? Is that the one where Charlie Claremont works? Is that muscle limit or is that body limit? I don't know, I'm gonna look that one up because obviously Norton's and Monster were great recommendations. So wherever muscle limit is, Oh, Enfield, Muscle Limit. I think I got confused for a moment. I confused that one with Body Factory. I think that's up 
north that way. I was going to do Body Factory. I think that's one that used to be one of the branches of Muscle Works and is now the Body Factory. But Muscle Limit Gym, I shall put that on the short list as well. That'd be easy enough to, to get to, being North London myself. Well, Wood Green, Turnpike Lane area. So that was that was one that wasn't on the list, Muscle Limit. Well, I think I'd heard of it, but it will continue. So those are some of the remaining gym tours, Monster, Muscle Limit, Norton's, and then there's a couple in South London that I was looking at. But I think there's a huge difference in atmosphere and the quality of equipment available in these kind of bodybuilding orientated gyms as opposed to the chain you know, workout places like the gym or pure gym. But if the nearest to you and what's going to be most convenient for getting started is something like a pure gym, don't let that put you off. I've put stuff on the channel just about doing home workouts and what can be done with just dumbbells and you got to do the best workout you can with what's available to you and if it's going to be more accessible for you to start with a pure gym or gym group or something like that just do that you know <laughs> the barbells and dumbbells and the weight plates weigh the same wherever you are so even though i'm very keen on showing the best places where you're going to meet the most supportive people and have all of the kind of machines and best equipment especially for lower body and things like hack squats and the heavy leg presses and stuff definitely just get started wherever you are because whatever you wherever you are or whatever happens there's something that you can do and I made the best of it during all of the restrictions in 2020 when the world went mad and my routine through that was just to go through over to a friend's house on the weekend and he got a home gym which I'm going to show in a video when I get the opportunity if he's okay with that because it's a really good example of what you can do with one small room to really optimise what you what you could do in terms of your progress. He just got a power cage, barbell and weight plates, a set of Blowflex adjustable dumbbells and an incline bench and that's and a rowing machine and that's about it. But what you can do with just that is amazing for one little room in your house. So that's something that I'm going to show in a future video. But during the lockdown phase, what we did is we train every weekend there. I would stay on Friday night, so on a, on a Friday like today, I'll go over, I would do upper body together on the Friday night, stay over Friday night, and then up Saturday morning, all refreshed to do the low, lower body workout, all squats, front squats, lunges, all of that kind of thing. And that was the resistance, well, the weights portion of my resistance routine during that ridiculous time, and then on two or three other days during the week, I would do calisthenics in the park. So I've got a full routine for doing upper body and lower body again. So I was doing an upper, upper lower split with one of pair of upper lower with weights of barbells and dumbbells in a home gym and the other pair like calisthenics doing upper lower. And then the other workouts I did, did in between were kind of those Tabata and HIIT workout circuits, a bit like my video from yesterday where I showed what I got with the battle ropes. And I have my own set of battle ropes. I do battle ropes, floor core exercises, skipping ropes, walking, hill running even. That's really good, doing sprints uphill. And that kept me in pretty good shape during the lockdowns and I was, I was exercising like that for at least six months before I just found a way to get into gyms as well. So while I am showing the best of the gyms that I possibly can with my gym tour series, don't think that that's a necessity, that's just kind of the best that I can recommend if you're going to choose and, and show you places that you may not have heard of. and just make better video content with that right kind of atmosphere around me and get out there and meet people which is helpful for me for growing the channel and such like so that's why I'm doing that but don't think that that's something that you you have to have access to if you don't because not everyone has the privilege of having places like that on the doorstep or so many to choose from them like we've got in North London so I hope to give examples of how you can work with the best of what you've got and I think, you know, 
maybe one day I'll get a guest pass for somewhere like Pure Gym. <laughs> Shall I work out in there? But I do know that places like that, the dumbbells go up to about 50 kilos. and They do make good use of the space in some ways in that they've got lots of lots of cages, lots of racks that you can use for a variety of exercises. So like all bench pressing, all squats, lunges, uh, overhead pressing, stuff like that. They'll have multiple stations like that, but it's, it's kind of the machines where the biggest gap lies in terms of the equipment you've got and that usually these gyms are able to provide better value because they have their own economies of scale, because they have so many branches. So they have, you know, those manufacturers like Matrix that will do the same gear for all their gyms like up and down the country. And that's what you see, but that's not, that's not as good as when you go somewhere like Muscle Works for lower body and they've got cherry picked kit from all different, the best of all different manufacturers like Gym 80, Hammer Strength, Primal, Cybex, everything when you've got these manufacturers that, that do more the low end and you know, it's the same brand for every piece in there it's really not quite the same but it's perfectly good enough up to a certain level so work with what you can find the best of what you can find but the other the other main difference is the atmosphere and the people that you meet you know it's, it's a little bit more a little bit more serious in some of these places like muscle works and body works and zone and legends and that's kind of my home environment and i'd recommend to anyone that really wants to push themselves to not be intimidated by that and get stuck in and if you're observed to be working diligently consistently the right kind of people will respect you and get to know you and that will only encourage you further and help you progress further from there so that's just a few thoughts on different places you might choose to train and a little bit of a preview of what's upcoming with my content in terms of gyms that I'm going to do tours of but other places that I'm going to show that are going to provide solutions for people in different kind of situations be that home workouts preferred or in a locality that doesn't have like a hardcore gym uh, but does have a reputable uh, commercial gym so all of that is upcoming i look forward to showing all of that but i do want to get to some places outside of london a little bit more obviously i've done the corby and peterborough ones but I've got other places in those towns that I want to show so in Peterborough I showed Definition Gym but I'm going to get back there to show the Bodyworks Gym unconnected to the Tottenham Bodyworks up here but they've got a Bodyworks in Peterborough spelt with an X that is where all the bodybuilders train I intend to do a gym tour of there and then when I get back to Corby I've got the cave to show my regular place is the chapel in Corby but the cave is also good I have been before and then as I just got back from Birmingham, from doing the Arnold Classic, I was aware that in Birmingham, where all of the serious guys like Wesley, well, watch Wesley's videos, and he appeared to be training in, in Dino's gym in or Solihull, I think it is, just Solihull on the outskirts of Birmingham. So that would be an example of somewhere outside of London that I intend to tour when I'm, when I'm traveling as well. It was just the wrong side of things for me to get to and from quickly to do a gym tour while I was up there in Birmingham last weekend. I had quite a lot of other, other commitments to attend to for producing those videos, so... It makes me want to go back up there for that kind of place. And then I've been invited to a couple of places in Liverpool I intend to do gym tours of. But really, I, I am interested to hear in where's good all up and down the country, so... Let me know if you have somewhere that you'd like to see that's com completely in a different town and it'll go on the list to be covered at some point because with daily content and this being a long-term thing, I can consider my options in all sorts of places and where I may wish to combine with a visit for other reasons. While I'm sat here, I've just had a message from someone that I'm working, working with. He's uh, looking at competitions, but he also likes those kind of Comic-Con and cosplay kind of events. He sent me this. He says he needs to look like this. I can do that. You know, I mean, I might have to 
I might have to refer him elsewhere for the, the talons and the, the skin tight outfit, but the physique and the, uh, the side effects of the, the hairy arm growth I, I probably know how to create. So <laughs> I look forward to that. It says Wolverine, looks like the front of a Marvel comic book. I never got into that stuff, you know, like I do know, um, apparently it's the 24th of May, he needs some big ass juicy arms, apparently, so that would be my speciality, but uh, he's out of luck on the outfit, but that's not too far away, is it, 24th of May, L luckily he's quite high level anyway, so we'll recreate that kind of, kind of look and then have him competing later in the year, but I, ne I never got into all of those um, all of those comic books and stuff like that, like the Marvel and what's the other, what's the other like, what's the other like big comic book firm that there was? Marvel and DC, isn't it? Marvel and DC. My dad likes all of that, that kind of thing. And I do actually know quite a lot of people are getting to bodybuilding that, that you know, their first encounter with like seeing freaky muscle and thinking it's cool is like through comic books and then. I know some other really serious bodybuilders that the first kind of like big guys they ever seen and thought, oh yeah, that's cool, I want to look like that, it was actually pro wrestlers. But for me, it was actually the look of bodybuilders. Like I may have told this story before on the channel, but I fir my first encounter with all that was looking at an encyclopedia in the library when I was about seven years old and it landed on the bodybuilding page and it had pictures of guys in the early 90s on stage as like Sean Ray and a few other people in this picture. And I just couldn't believe that a human being could look like that that much kind of detail and like a you know statue just just all detailed and carved out like just couldn't believe it anyway it kind of formed an impression in my mind and that was the first encounter that I had of it but never never got into the wrestling or the comic books or anything like that it was it was actually the bodybuilders and then I discovered myself that I was stronger than other kids when I was younger, like when you muck about arm wrestling or how many press-ups you can do. And so it meant that I was keen to do things like resistance training when they let you do gym training instead of like football when I got into my teens and then just kind of picked it up from there. So that was my thing. But obviously like I encountered um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movies like quite early on in my in my um, childhood, I watch films like The Terminator ones with, with my dad, Terminator and Predator, and those were some of my favourite films. But I had, I had actually seen pictures of bodybuilders before that, so I kind of already I had the idea in my mind, and, and I realised that bodybuilding was the thing, and that I liked training for strength, and didn't really get on so well with team sports. It became my thing, but. I like helping people with whatever their goal or inspiration or or way of working is. So you know, when I when I get sent stuff like that, I find it like quite entertaining and a little bit of a novelty from the way I got into this. So uh, I'm going to send him a voice note back now. He's uh, he just he just replied, uh, "Hey man, you you sent this just as I was recording a video. So the picture of the Wolverine is featured in today's video, mate. I'm just talking talking about it." contest preps and getting ready for comic cons and stuff now for today's video yeah he'll like that that's uh, that's gonna be good stuff i feel like i feel like i should get into that kind of thing and and get to meet more people because everyone says that i look bigger in real life so if i could get an outfit like that together but i feel like i feel like i'd be exposed as a poser as soon as i got to the event i'd be like i'd be there in my outfit and like in in good condition and looking big and and everything and i'd be you know all up for the day for like meeting some cosplay girls and stuff like that and then i'd get into my first conversation and and be exposed as a faker who doesn't know anything about comic books and and nerd culture and it's just a bodybuilder that infiltrated by getting an outfit you know so i, I don't know I don't know if I can make that work for myself so getting someone else ready for something like that I can live vicariously and then and enjoy hearing about what a good time he's had if it all works out but all those comic book creatures and superheroes and stuff they're all 
they're all a great physique, aren't they? I think the techniques of bodybuilding, they spill over into so many things, like all these movie stars that have to have a good physique nowadays, and it's the toolkit of bodybuilding that produces that in as quick a time as possible. So I really feel like that's another reason I feel like I've learned something valuable by kind of reading about all this stuff over the last 20 years and, and practicing it is that I could work with all sorts of people on all sorts of goals and I have, I have worked with a couple of actors before on producing how they had to look for a certain deadline. Um, obviously I can't share who that was but that's, you know, that's all part of the opportunities that come with the skill set so I'm very, I'm very grateful for how things have turned out for what I thought was just a hobby beginning 20 years ago and I still love it all as much as the day I started so that's why I'm, I'm very much enjoying oh he's happy that he's made it into the video <laughs> I'm always like you do this you're like constantly on call but I love it because it is uh it is what I enjoy just as much as the day I started, as I say, so that's why I really enjoy still making the videos every day and see that as a continued thing. So I'm going to get myself back, think about my arrangements for tomorrow, because I think that'll be a little bit more of an exciting video and actually meet more people than it just me be me waffling all along for, a, for an evening and no, no workout even. So a little bit more exciting and more of an adventure tomorrow. And as always, if you've got any questions or requests, drop them in the comments. Make sure you subscribe, spread the word, and speak to you tomorrow. Cheers.